Aloha, welcome to Cooper Union, what's happening with human rights around the world on Think Tech Live, broadcasting from our downtown studio in Honolulu, Hawaii, Moana Nui Akea. I'm your host, Joshua Cooper, and today we're looking at a global rally for human rights in Ukraine. I'm so fortunate to be able to welcome Anka, who's broadcasting live from Kiev. Anka, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me. Hi, everyone. What inspired you to get involved to end this war? Well, I was born in Donbass uh, when the war began and I uh, have been living under occupation for some time and I wasn't, I wasn't able to get to my place, to my home almost seven years. So I'm the most motivated person uh, to try to help to finish this war. And uh, yeah, so this is my motivation. <laughs> I definitely understand, and we can see the passion and the work that you do. Maybe you could share with us a bit about what is Unity of Ukraine and what are some of the important initiatives that it's organizing, because we know that world opinion continues to rise in favor of democracy and freedom for all with solidarity rising in Ukraine. And there's a new standard of rule of law and human rights for all. So can you share with us Unity of Ukraine, civil society, and what you've been able to do with the creation of these important initiatives? Yeah, so first of all, it's the name of my nonprofit organizations here in States. Uh, but uh, other than this, it's international network of Ukrainians and allies uh, who support Ukraine during this Russian and provoked uh, invasion. Um, in Ukraine, we work directly with Ministry of Defense, Ministry of Health and others. Uh, worldwide, we work with volunteers, with businesses, diplomats, governments and media and others. So we're delivering everything to Ukraine, medicine, humanitarian aid, and we advocating for Ukraine and also I'm a coordinator of one of the coordinators, we are all equal, uh, of a group uh, where all protest organizers in one chat and they're all Ukrainians and they are from all over the world. So this is, this is very important and very meaningful for me doing this kind of coordination also. Thank you. Can you share some examples of engagement coordinated through the unity of Ukraine and what impact it's been able to have so far since February 24th? Yeah, I can mention just last one about protest. So uh, there is those countries where actually can be even no protest at all, but people still can wear t-shirts and uh, that's which is saying Russia is a, Russia is a terrorist state and um, we're discussing hashtags what we'll be using next week and we are using our we are sharing our best experiences and life hacks and how to do those rallies protests uh, uh, more leg regular and to keep everything is going in week by week day by day there is some countries where it's which has which has like everyday protests like oslo in turkey and um some countries they're neutral and also for us it's uh, <laughs> it's a um, good how to say it mm, good case to join our efforts all together all organized to discuss how we can push that uh, uh push not push how to say it which is better word for this um what we could do <laughs> to move the country or government or people uh to, to, like to our side, more on our side, to be in, more involved. So, um, and also there's, it's a good way to share all visuals and everything. So we are trying to save time and money for all of us, um, not preparing those designs for every week, uh, just sharing this creative, because I'm a designer. <laughs> I was a designer before the war began. This is my thing, but now I see it as, um, is a huge help for everyone, for coordinators, um, just to be able to have uh, to have everything to be prepared and to spend more much time on thinking of what to say and where to say and how and um, yeah, not spend time on uh, organizers organizing things, you know, like coordinating like those operations. I don't know the 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 correct word for this. No, it, it's so yes. It makes a lot of sense and it's great for you to share about unity of Ukraine and civil society 
and the creation of these rallies to show support for universal values. Also, these power, po powerful positive protests for peace illustrate the ideal for stronger international institutions to promote and protect human rights. And more importantly, you would also secure support to end the war in the world and to hold the perpetrators accountable for the crimes against humanity and genocide. So we understand how you're leveraging your creativity, as you said, and how it's important to go forward. Maybe you could share with me some of those examples of engagement. How about information exchange? Although you talked about the t-shirts, what are some of the messages on t-shirts that people are wearing and where are they wearing them around the world? Well, it's not just t-shirts. You can put your hashtag everywhere in social media, on the wall, on a billboard, um, wherever your imagination can go and how much money do you have. So, um, so sharing information is very important. And this is the, the most powerful thing that we can do on our rallies because uh, even a small community in small town, we can share something like where are donation sites, how people can help in their community uh how they can what they can send to ukraine for example which is first priority second priority uh for example it is also a good thing for like building community of ukrainians allies and networking and so also we can share information which kind of petitions you should sign right now because the, this information it's already in the internet but sometimes you just need to talk with the person directly to understand like, how important in this uh, is uh, this. Uh, for example, on some uh, cities, we have a table with the letters, with examples, letters that they can sign exactly on a protest. And we providing them envelopes and a stamp, and they can send these letters to representatives and we are getting answers. And it's, uh, it's a huge thing. A lot of people, just small amount of time, they got there, they signed petition, they signed a letter, they signed a request, uh, everything that they wanna say, to their representatives and we just send it and yes it's i see that i see the results and people sometimes doesn't know those numbers of those bills that our representatives should vote or should sign or um yeah but we are providing them this information we're saving time for them it's also important and uh, with this kind of efforts yeah it's win 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 <laughs> situation uh, it's great and there's a lot that we can get to so first and foremost you were talking about supplies that are needed. Could you share with us number one, two, and three right now and how people can do that? And then we'll definitely get into the information exchange, the advocacy with different parliaments and, and legislation, as well as boycotts and going on the different activities, the different ways and levels that people can participate to support human rights in Ukraine. Yeah, um, logistic question. That was the first one where I began at the beginning of the huge scale of the war. I have been living in LA and uh, first my closest donation was in the Northwest and it was so close. I came there and a lot of people were packing and sorting things. It was clothes, it was baby formula, it was diapers, everything that we thought that's very important there. And um, our storage was full with all of these things, but the question how to send it was the most important <laughs> because people gather in a lot, but to send it, we, we try to find funding and we're trying to find containers and understand the fastest and the most efficient way how to send it. So there's variation of how to do it, how we are doing this. The fastest, of course, people are flying with luggages. I was the one who was flying from San Francisco yesterday with 10 bags, huge, like 50 pound bags. Uh, uh, just I'm the one person with the 50 bags and volunteers, of course, who helped me to deliver to airport. So I went through check-in. They checked in everything. I gave them letter that this is humanitarian aid. This is that organization, this organization, and we are spreading it to, like I'm going to Warsaw and then by car to Ukraine and I'm delivering it uh, like by, to front lines basically, uh, like by car or just using our um, delivery companies like uh, Post and everything. So yeah, so this is the fastest, but also very expensive because the price of the bag is very huge. <laughs> we, we're not getting those bags for free. I wish, I wish we had this opportunity. But uh, second one, it's uh, also very like this is first priority goals. It's just tactical medicine, and um, mostly it's tactical medicine because 
uh, it's the weight is so like less it's a small weight but the value is very big because you can stop for example bleeding with the with the one small tourniquets and it's it's pretend like you it's a prevent person from bleeding for a short amount of time it's very important to have this and we we need it a lot uh right now especially when we have those liberated cities and we are uh, i can say that we are losing a lot of like three times more people just to try to get our territory back so uh, we need a lot of tactical medicine right now and protective gear also um the second way how we can send it is uh by plane uh the price for this like higher also uh higher than container for example but at least it's short amount of time so everything also first priority but heavy things can go by plane by cargo uh so and the the last that we are using most frequently be, because it's the cheapest way is to send everything by containers for example i have information that like uh, today, for example, today there will be container in Utah and they have some space for us, like four pallets, six pallets, and we can send it there and it will be delivered. The price for container already covered by other donors and we are able to put something else, something that's very important, but we still don't have money to send it um, to this container. In two weeks, there will be, in one week, there will be in Mississippi two containers. So also I have information there can be some place there and uh, by these containers, everything that was donated by, for example, in LA, there was, uh, we had a storage in Culver City, there was Santa Barbara firefighter departments donated a lot. Uh, health department gave us also, Long Beach Health Drug Enforcement Agency gave us some, so that, that they have like all things on their storage. It was amazing. We were so lucky to get uh, everything that they don't need anymore. They don't use it anymore because they have more, you know i don't know new stuff maybe i don't know uh, the reason why it's on the storage it was there for a long time and they just giving us to giving it to us and we ascend it by container out like why my reason here it's not to fly with them back so i'm waiting for container which is already in gdansk and we will deliver it to uh ukraine to lviv to west part of ukraine and then it will go all over all those front lines that only those hot spots we are not delivering for now to those spots where it's where you can buy something with money. So uh, everything that you cannot buy, it's those uh, east side, like Kharkiv, Donbass, Mykolaiv, Odessa, uh, everyone, every, every like small cities and big cities, which are in huge need of those stuff that we are gathering and we are getting from other organizations, we are delivering there. It's dangerous because it's going by volunteers, uh, but uh, it's all what we can do right now. I think in Ukraine, everyone is volunteer right now. It's a it's an honor to be a volunteer here in Ukraine and all over, actually, not just in Ukraine, because I feel that volunteers are all over the world right Absolutely. now. And a lot of people, a lot of people helping us. It's true. And, it, and the spirit's catching on. And I'm glad that all your bags came. Many people lost their bags this summer. So it's great, at least they didn't lose these bags. That's very important. And it's also great to hear even an insight into some of the amazing work you're doing, picking up the containers as they arrive there and all the pieces that you're putting together really is so valuable and people do appreciate that work that you're doing. And it's true, everyone is volunteering in their own way. And some of the skills you shared earlier, could you talk about how you're running boycotts and how you're helping people to know the information so that they don't contribute a single red cent or make sure that how they buy something with their euros, it doesn't contribute to buying as even a small bullet or a larger bomb. How are you organizing these boycotts? Because it's great that you're getting the materials there. It's great that you're bringing the things, but then you're also trying to ignite people's minds to see how they can make a difference with their wallet to end this war. Yeah. Uh... Uh, good question, but first I want to mention there is a lot of me uh, in this talks, but no, 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 it's not me. It's our joint efforts. It's a lot of people all over. Uh, they're in Ukraine, they're in states and other countries. 
And it's not me organizing, it's not me delivering, it's us, our efforts. Uh, some people are finding those donations. I'm, I can just open the storage and that was my job, for example. But then I know information where I get money for to, to pay the price for the container. It's, it's not my money, it's someone's money. So basically it's not me, it's us. Uh, it's a huge team uh, of people. It's like circles and circles, small and bigger. Um, so yeah, and it's not my organization, it's it's organizations also. So uh, I would love to mention all of them, <laughs> but we have just 30 minutes. Yeah, so uh, you mentioned about boycotts. Yes, uh, uh, it's a really good practice. Uh, it's, um, how to say it? Uh, like I just have information that people who are, uh, who knows about some companies that they still are operating in Russia, and they still run in businesses there and they're still spending their money uh, there. Uh, and we know about this company. I think the whole world knows about this company. But at the end of the day, we see that uh, some companies are still there and they didn't shut their offices. So small amount of team, some small, small, like small team, it can be five people, it can be just one person. Uh, they started a campaign to help these companies understand how important for them and for us, Ukrainian also, to stop operate uh, their business in Russia right now. Because basically if I'm using something, like it can be application on my phone and I don't know, uh, I just paid for subscription, or, but I don't know that this money goes to Russia right now. And basically you're providing bullets to Ukraine so the, the, you just using your application, you know, no one knows that it's, uh, it's uh, Russian, uh, uh, like the taxes are there in mm -hmm. Russia. Yeah, so for, for me to see this kind of cases, it's not one case, it's a lot of them. It's a very huge, like I'm, I'm just noticing and I'm just admire all those people and those efforts because everyone is on their place. I'm not a protest organizer, I'm j I just know them. I just decided to put them in a chat to say, like, guys, what kind of trouble you have? What have like life hacks? We we did this and it went, was amazing, like a flash mob with dancing people. It brought brought so much attention at the time when attention went down to those because there's you know some points of uh, time when uh, the media says like less, for example. So uh, it's another topic. So. Um, yeah, sorry, I switched again. <laughs> no Boycotts, problem. Yes. I think we're doing good. Yeah. Boycotts are important <laughs> and most people don't yeah. know about the apps. So that's crucial. Maybe one other aspect you can share with us is the advocacy and how you're connecting citizens with their public officials and then how that legislation has a positive impact on contributing to promoting and protecting human rights in Ukraine. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just part of huge community of nonprofit organizations, which is operating here in States. And all of them who are support Ukraine, who are going with democracy, uh, they are advocating for Ukraine in Capitol building. It's like days, days and days in, in Washington DC. So it's a really good way to talk with their representatives and to explain them where and how they can help share their stories. I'm the one who's sharing stories from the ground because I'm flying back and forth to Ukraine. It's my third trip already. And I can say what exactly happening right now. What I see with my own eyes, I have everything on my phone and I can show uh, that, that I had a flag with the signature, signature with those soldiers that were signed when I was delivering help. Just explaining like, this is real, it's not that kind of far. <laughs> it's just like me, I can tell you, you can see, you can hear those stories through my mouth, basically, uh, through my emotions, yes. Yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it's also joint efforts, yes. Yeah, so some people more uh, into those terms and into those bills and legislation acts and everything. I'm more um, on the emotional side, on story side, or uh, I don't know, but um, it's, I think it's a good team. Uh, also, we had some, uh, our musicians there, their soldiers were there uh, who was in Ukraine. Like they, they were flying specifically for these events to say like, I'm a soldier. You can ask me whatever you want to ask and I will be answering all your questions. And also I will give you a whole update because 
everything that the government says, it's one thing. We are saying the same, but we can say it from our ground, from our uh, perspective, from our small unit, yeah, from battalion, from small city, uh, just from my family as a unit also, I can say what is happening. And uh, from my friends and from, you know, different, different views. So uh, it's amazing. I think we, we should spend more time on this also advocating for Ukraine with our representatives here in states and also sharing through this uh, protest coordinators chat. Uh, we are sharing experience how they can advocate on other countries like Australia and in uh, Germany, Europe, all over, like how they can do it with use, using this, our experience, uh, scaling this, how we can join our efforts and um, I don't know, messages that we want to share. It's true. Like once you build one example, then you can replicate it. And as you said, scale it up to then make extra pressure in the most positive ways. And it is combining how we use our money to contribute to the movement for human rights. It is combining our voice, in this case for the voiceless who are busy fighting on the front lines, but making sure that we educate. And we know you can't do all of it, but it's it's connecting people and even accountability so that people could hear from a soldier on the front lines what's going on and to be able to ask any question. That's so important. And so the people to people exchange is absolutely essential. And it's also taking away the media in the middle, but allowing everyone to find out what they can do and how with their basic skill set, they can even be more strategic to make a, a great difference going forward. Can you also maybe share with us even dancing, I think you're talking about how we could dance for democracy and have people have come together and done flash mobs. So it's not just your wallet, it's not just calling, it's also moving your body to make a difference. Yeah, it's a very good example how controversial dancing can be, you know, when it's protest that was in LA, for example, one of those was in LA and people just gathering together weeks and weeks to uh to make those you know to train how to move with the uh, that was the ukrainian song of course and we were dancing together uh that was also like a building community thing but you know we thought we thought that we are doing the right thing right now we want to bring as much as possible attention to protest to everything that is happening in ukraine even by dancing you know uh so Mm, yeah, that was hard to dance, of course. Uh, our faces were sad, but look, with the smile on your face, we had sad feelings because I would love to dance somewhere else, not on protest, <laughs> you know. But for me, it's it's it was a good, really good thing because I got my um, how to say it, like a little bit of movement because I'm sitting like this always with computers or phone in those chats and everything. But a little bit of movement, everyone is needed. Like also. Uh, but uh, to gather a lot of people wearing blue and yellow on an amazing song, Ukrainian song, which is the way how we are sharing also our culture that to show everyone, look, guys, this is our culture. It's supposed to be, we need to save it. And you're supposed to have, help us to save it because it's, it's amazing what we have, how talented our people, how creative we are, how Ukrainians are brave and funny and um resilient also so yeah so this is a very really good way to uh to share our culture also and to to get this attention even through dance that look there are so many people dancing here and dancing there and there's people that just can record themselves using the same moves but also spreading the message that can be any message stand with ukraine very neutral or arm Ukraine now, or Russia is a terrorist state, it depends. So basically uh, delivering message, always possible. <laughs> it's everything that we're trying to do, spreading information, bring more attention, more attention, because you know, where's your attention? <laughs> There's your heart there and your focus and your thoughts. So yeah. And it, it, a lot is happening. We know that nine Central and Eastern European NATO members are supporting Ukraine's application for fast track approval into NATO. We also know that there's been a recovery of 
Ukrainian grain that Russia has been trying to smuggle. So there's people holding them accountable at that level on a wider, vast scale. We also know there's been advances where we see then uh, north of Kherson and also retaken at least 50 towns and villages, freeing thousands of civilians. And we know it's also the flag is flying again over David Brid as well, just recently, as well as some actions in the east and the south. So a lot is going on and everyone's making their contribution to try to end this war as soon as possible and make sure that peace can be restored and also that you could go back to your homeland. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, a lot of things happening right now and uh, all have been used. For me, of course, when I see extra, when I see Ukrainian flag on liberated city, it makes my heart like beating so fast because I'm thinking like maybe Donbass also will be liberated soon, maybe Crimea, maybe I will go to Crimea soon also. But also knowing information from front lines, how many soldiers are dying right now because they're taking their land back and it's a really big price for this to get those liberated city back to Ukraine. Oh, so for me, it's also controversial. So I know what is happening and there is no time no, I don't know, no space for me to celebrate something like this. I can, I can smile, yes, but you know, it's also sad, very sad moment knowing those numbers and how, how those people who are stayed there in those occupied territory, how they are struggling right now. They don't have food, they don't have, have water, electricity, medicine, everything. So for us, it's a lot of work for everyone uh, to help, uh, to bring everything that it's needed there. Um, it's basically like Burning Man, you know? Uh, so there is nothing there and you need to bring everything there so there will be life again. Uh, well, that would be Burning Man for the brilliant and the beautiful, truly, if that can be done. And we know you're doing a lot. And of course, one person can only do so much, but it sounds like your circles of compassion are very creative and being able to do a lot of things. And as you pointed out, there's definitely so much more that needs to be done. And as we look, as you talked about it, the people that stayed and remained there, but then the human rights violations, the crimes against humanity, the war crimes, really we need an international tribunal of accountability to make sure that perpetrators such as Russia know that there's a heavy price to pay. And we thank you so much for sharing with us today some of the exciting work of Unity of Ukraine. And we look forward to future shows when we can get into greater detail about specific actions and all the amazing work that you are just a catalyst for social change. Yeah, thank you so much. I want to mention one thought that uh, mm -hmm. if you're ready to build or rebuild the frontier of modern society, culture, and technology starting in Ukraine, please join us. Uh, go to our website, unityofukraine.org. And um, yes, be a part of us. <laughs> I will be happy um, to you know, to help you if like how the, to, uh, to explain the way how you can help on your place with your time. And yeah, thank exactly. you so much for having me here. <laughs> no, it's perfect. It's, it's what we're trying to do is show what persons can do, where they're at with what they have. And we see that beautiful message behind you. And I think that's what we're just asking yeah. all people to do. And thank yes, you so yes. much. The yeah, the sign says bravery has two colors. It's uh, right, uh, uh, right in in Kiev. It's a huge billboard. It's a very good way to also reminding to ourselves, Ukrainians, <laughs> that don't forget who we are, where we are, what we are doing, and what we are fighting for. Yeah, there will be the war will be over soon. I hope so. And um, yeah, finally we we will do our thing <laughs> as we do always as Ukrainians. Absolutely. Mahalo.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.